Lois Lane here with all the information on Superman, also marketed as Superman, the movie. A 1978 superhero film, based on the DC comic superhero Superman, played by Christopher Reeve. It is the first of four installments in the Superman film series starring Reeve as Superman. The film was directed by Richard Donner based on a screenplay by Mario Puzo, David Newman, Leslie Newman, and Robert Benton. In addition to Reeve, the film features an ensemble cast including Marlon Brando, Gene Hackman, Jeff East, Margot Kidder, Glenn Ford, Phyllis Thaxter, Jackie Cooper, Trevor Howard, Mark McClure, Terrence Stamp, Valerie Perrine, Ned Beatty, Jack O'Halloran, Maria Schell, and Sarah Douglas. It depicts the origin of Superman, including his infancy as Kal-El of Krypton, son of Jor-El, Brando, and his youthful years in the rural town of Smallville. Disguised as reporter Clark Kent, he adopts a mild-mannered disposition in Metropolis and develops a romance with Lois Lane, Kidder, while battling the villainous Lex Luthor, Hackman. Ilya Sawkind had the idea of a Superman film in 1973 and, after a difficult process with DC Comics, the Sawkinds bought the rights to the character the following year. Several directors, most notably Guy Hamilton, and screenwriters, were associated with the project before Donner was hired to direct. Tom Mankiewicz was drafted in to rewrite the script and was given a creative consultant credit. It was decided to film both Superman and its sequel Superman II. 1980, simultaneously, with principal photography beginning in March 1977 and ending in October 1978. Tensions arose between Donner and the producers, and a decision was made to stop filming the sequel, of which 75% had already been completed, and finish the first film. The most expensive film made up to that point, with a budget of $55 million, Superman premiered at the Kennedy Center in New York City on December 10, 1978, and was released in the United Kingdom on December 14, and in the United States on December 15. The film was a critical and financial success, its worldwide box office earnings of $300 million made it the second-highest grossing release of the year. It received praise for Reeves' performance and John Williams's musical score and was nominated for Best Film Editing, Best Music, Original Score, and Best Sound at the 51st Academy Awards, and received a Special Achievement Academy Award for Visual Effects. Groundbreaking in its use of special effects and science fiction-slash-fantasy storytelling, the film's legacy presaged the mainstream popularity of Hollywood's superhero film franchises. In 2017, Superman was selected for preservation by the Library of Congress's National Film Registry. On the planet Krypton, Jor-El, a member of the Kryptonian High Council, sentences criminals General Zod, Nan, and Ursa to the Phantom Zone. He warns the Council that Krypton will be destroyed by its exploding red supergiant sun, but they dismiss his concerns. Before the planet's destruction, Jor-El and his wife Lara send their baby son Kal-El to Earth, where his unique physiology grants him evolving superhuman abilities. Kal-El's spaceship touches down near Smallville, Kansas. Found by a married couple, Jonathan and Martha Kent, who are astonished when the infant lifts their truck, they adopt him, naming him Clark. As he grows, hiding his powers, Jonathan believes Clark was sent to Earth for a special purpose. After Jonathan dies from a heart attack, a teenage Clark discovers a green crystal in his spacecraft's remains. This leads him to the Arctic, where he constructs the Fortress of Solitude, echoing Krypton's design. Inside, Jor-El's hologram reveals Clark's heritage and trains him for 12 years. Emerging in a blue and red suit, bearing the House of El Crest, he is cautioned against changing human history. At the Daily Planet in Metropolis, Clark becomes a reporter and is drawn to Lois Lane. After saving her from a helicopter accident, he uses his powers in public acts of heroism, gaining immediate fame as the caped wonder. Perry White, the Daily Planet's chief, seeks more information on this new hero. Clark later visits Lois, taking her on a flight, leading her to coin his name, Superman. Criminal mastermind Lex Luthor discovers a joint U.S. army slash U.S. Navy missile test and plots to target the San Andreas Fault with reprogrammed missiles, though one is misdirected by his bumbling assistant, Otis. Suspecting Superman's interference, Lex identifies a Kryptonian meteorite, lethal to Superman. 
With Otis and his girlfriend Eve Teshmaker, Lex retrieves it and traps Superman in his lair, revealing his plan to sink the western U.S., making his desert land prime coastline. He weakens Superman using the meteor, now known as Kryptonite, and informs him of the misdirected missile set for Hackensack, New Jersey. Concerned for her mother in Hackensack, Teshmaker frees Superman, urging him to first stop the eastbound missile. He sends it to space, but misses the westbound missile, which triggers severe earthquakes in California, endangering landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and Hoover Dam. Superman counteracts the devastation by mending the fault line. As Superman rescues others, Lois gets trapped in her car by an aftershock, suffocating before he can save her. Distraught and enraged over his failure to save Lois, Superman disregards Jor-El's warning against altering history. Heeding Jonathan's belief in his purpose, he flies around Earth, reversing time to prevent Lois's death and the missile's destruction. After saving the West Coast, he imprisons Luther and Otis, then soars into the sunrise. The Cast Marlon Brando, as Jor-El, Superman's biological father on Krypton. He has a theory about the planet exploding, yet the council refuses to listen. He dies as the planet explodes, but successfully sends his infant son to Earth as a means to help the child. Brando sued the Sawkinds and Warner Brothers for $50 million because he felt cheated out of his share of the box office profits. This stopped Brando's footage from being used in Richard Lester's version of Superman 2. Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, a scientific genius and businessman who is Superman's nemesis. It is he who discovers Superman's weakness and hatches a plan that puts millions of people in danger. Christopher Reeve as Clark Kent slash Superman, born on Krypton as Kal-El and raised on Earth, he is a being of immense power, strength, flight and invulnerability who, after realizing his destiny to serve mankind, uses his powers to protect and save others. As a means to protect his identity, he works in Metropolis at the Daily Planet as mild-mannered newspaper reporter Clark Kent and changes his clothes into a red-blue-red caped suit with an S-shield on its chest and is dubbed Superman by Lois. Reeve was picked from over 200 actors who auditioned for the role. Jeff East as the teenage Clark Kent, as a teenager, he is forced to hide his superhuman abilities making him unpopular among his classmates and frustrating his efforts to gain the attention of classmate Lana Lang, Diane Sherry. Following the death of his adoptive father, he travels to the Arctic to discover his Kryptonian heritage. East's dialogue in the film is redubbed by Christopher Reeve for the final cut. Ned Beatty as Otis, Lex Luthor's bumbling henchman. Jackie Cooper as Perry White, Clark Kent's hot-tempered boss at the Daily Planet. He assigns Lois to uncover the news of an unknown businessman purchasing a large amount of property in California. Keenan Wynn was originally cast, but dropped out shortly before filming because of heart disease. Cooper, who originally auditioned for Otis, was subsequently cast. Glenn Ford as Jonathan Kent, Clark Kent's adoptive father in Smallville, during his youth. He is a farmer who teaches Clark skills that will help him in the future. He later has a fatal heart attack that changes Clark's outlook on his duty to others. Trevor Howard as the first elder, head of the Kryptonian Council, who does not believe Jor-El's claim that Krypton is doomed. He warns Jor-El, any attempt by you to create a climate of fear and panic amongst the populace must be deemed by us an act of insurrection. Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, a reporter at the Daily Planet, who becomes a romantic interest to Clark Kent. The producers and director had a very specific concept for Lois, liberated, hard-nosed, witty, and attractive. Kidder was cast because her performance had a certain spark and vitality, and because of her strong interaction with Christopher Reeve. Over 100 actresses were considered for the role. Margot Kidder, suggested by Stallmaster, and Archer, Susan Blakely, Leslie and Warren, Deborah Raff Finn, and Stockard Channing screen tested from March through May 1977. The final decision was between Channing and Kidder, with the latter winning the role. Jack O'Halloran is non, large and mute, the third of the Kryptonian villains who are sentenced to be isolated in the Phantom Zone. Valerie Perrine as Eve Teshmaker, Lex Luthor's girlfriend and accomplice. Already cynical of his increasing grandiosity and disturbed by his cruelty, she saves Superman's life after learning that Luther has launched a nuclear missile toward her mother's hometown of Hackensack, 
New Jersey. She shows a romantic interest in Superman, implied by her fixing her hair before she makes her presence known to him, and then by kissing him before she saves his life. Maria Schell is Vonda, like Jor-El, a top Kryptonian scientist, but she too is not swayed by Jor-El's theories. Terence Stamp as General Zod, evil leader of the three Kryptonian criminals. Phyllis Thaxter as Martha Kent, Nate Clark, Clark Kent's faithful adoptive mother. A kindly woman who dotes on her adoptive son and is fiercely devoted to her husband, Jonathan. She is her son's emotional support after Clark is devastated by Jonathan's death. Thaxter was producer Ilya Sawkind's mother-in-law. Susanna York as Lara, Superman's biological mother on Krypton. She, after learning of Krypton's fate, has apprehensions about sending her infant son to a strange planet alone. Mark McClure as Jimmy Olsen, a teenage photographer at the Daily Planet. Jeff East, who portrayed the teenage Clark Kent, originally auditioned for this role, but outranked following his portrayal of the teen Clark. Sarah Douglas as Ursa, General Zod's second-in-command and consort, sentenced to the Phantom Zone for her unethical scientific experiments. Caroline Monroe turned down the opportunity to play Ursa, in favor of Naomi in The Spy Who Loved Me. Harry Andrews as the second elder, council member, who urges Jor-El to be reasonable about plans to save Krypton. Kirk Allen and Noel Neal have cameo appearances. They played the parents of young Lois Lane in a deleted scene that was restored in later home media releases. Allen and Neal portrayed Superman and Lois Lane in the film serial Superman, 1948, and Adam Man vs. Superman, 1950 and were the first actors to portray the characters on screen in a live-action format. Neil reprised her role in the 1950s Adventures of Superman TV series. Larry Hagman and Rex Reed also make cameos. Hagman plays an army major in charge of a convoy that is transporting one of the missiles, and Reed plays himself as he meets Lois and Clark outside the Daily Planet headquarters. Development Ilya Sawkind had first conceived the idea for a Superman film in late 1973. In November 1974, after a long, difficult process with DC Comics, the Superman film rights were purchased by Ilya, his father Alexander Sawkind, and their partner Pierre Spangler. DC wanted a list of actors that were to be considered for Superman, and approved the producers' choices of Muhammad Ali, Al Pacino, James Caan, Steve McQueen, Clint Eastwood, and Dustin Hoffman. The filmmakers felt it was best to film Superman and Superman 2 back-to-back, -back, and to make a negative pickup deal with Warner Brothers. William Goldman was approached to write the screenplay, while Lee Brackett was considered. Ilya hired Alfred Bester, who began writing a film treatment. Alexander felt, however, that Bester was not famous enough, so he hired Mario Puzo to write the screenplay at a $600,000 salary. Francis Ford Coppola, William Friedkin, Richard Lester, who later directed Superman 2 II and 3, Peter Yates, John Gellerman, Ronald Neem and Sam Peckinpah were in negotiations to direct. Peckinpah dropped out when he produced a gun during a meeting with Ilya. George Lucas turned down the offer because of his commitment to Star Wars. Ilya wanted to hire Steven Spielberg to direct, but Alexander was skeptical, feeling it was best to wait until Spielberg's Big Fish Opens. Jaws was very successful, prompting the producers to offer Spielberg the position, but by then Spielberg had already committed to close encounters of the third kind. Guy Hamilton was hired as director, while Puzo delivered his script for Superman and Superman II in July 1975. Jack Shuar appeared as one of General Zod's henchmen, with Clark Kent written as a television reporter. Dustin Hoffman, who was previously considered for Superman, turned down Lex Luthor. In early 1975, Brando signed on as Jor-El with a salary of $3.7 million and 11.75% of the box office gross profits, totaling $19 million. He horrified Sawkind by proposing in their first meeting that Jor-El appear as a green suitcase or a bagel with Brando's voice, but Donner used flattery to persuade the actor to portray Jor-El himself. Brando hoped to use some of his salary for a proposed 13-part Roots-style miniseries on Native Americans in the United States. Brando had it in his contract to complete all of his scenes in 12 days. 
He also refused to memorize his dialogue, so cue cards were compiled across the set. Fellow Oscar winner Hackman was cast as Lex Luthor days later. The filmmakers made it a priority to shoot all of Brando's and Hackman's footage because they would be committed to other films immediately. Though the Sawkinds felt that Puzo had written a solid story for the two-part film, they deemed his scripts as very heavy, and so hired Robert Benton and David Newman for rewrite work. Benton became too busy directing The Late Show, so David's wife Leslie was brought in to help her husband finish writing duties. George MacDonald Fraser was later hired to do some work on the script, but he says he did little. Their script was submitted in July 1976 and had a camp tone, including a cameo appearance by Telly Savalas as his Kojak character. The scripts for Superman and Superman 2 were now at over 400 pages combined. Pre-production started at Cinecita Studios in Rome, with sets starting construction and flying tests being unsuccessfully experimented. In Italy, producer Ilya Sawkind remembered, we lost about $2 million on flying tests. Marlon Brando found out he could not film in Italy because of a warrant out for his arrest, a sexual obscenity charge from Last Tango in Paris. Production moved to England in late 1976, but Hamilton could not join because he was a tax exile. Hamilton left the project as he was also ill. Mark Robson was strongly considered and was in talks to direct but after seeing The Omen, the producers hired Richard Donner. Donner had previously been planning Damien, Omen 2, when he was hired in January 1977 for $1 million to direct Superman and Superman 2. Donner felt it was best to start from scratch. They had prepared the picture for a year and not one bit was useful to me. Donner was dissatisfied with the campy script and brought in Tom Mankiewicz to perform a rewrite. According to Mankiewicz, not a word from the Puzo script was used. It was a well-written, but still a ridiculous script. It was 550 pages. I said, you can't shoot this screenplay because you'll be shooting for five years, Donner continued. That was literally a shooting script and they planned to shoot all 550 pages. You know, 110 pages is plenty for a script, so even for two features, that was way too much. Mankiewicz conceived having each Kryptonian family wear a crest resembling a different letter, justifying the S on Superman's costume. The Writers Guild of America